Can I make a... <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm Dory Greenspan, and I'm so happy to be back in the Food 52 kitchen. Today, I'm going to make a Parisian custard tart. It's a snack in Paris, and not all that well-known elsewhere. I'm going to change that. The Parisian custard tart starts, <laughs> it's a twister, um, with custard. And because I'm going to boil milk, I want to rinse the pan with cold water. It helps to keep the milk from scorching most of the time. It's primarily a milk-based custard, although it's really not very rich. So, milk and water and half the sugar I'm just going to... That looks like half. And then some of that, too. Want to get this really hot. I'm going to keep an eye on it because while the cold water might keep the milk from scorching, there's very little that keeps the milk from boiling over and making a mess unless you keep an eye on it. While the milk is heating, I'm going to start on the custard. So the rest of the sugar some brown sugar. You want to make sure it doesn't have lumps. And cornstarch. So really, the filling is like an old-fashioned cornstarch pudding. So just whisk these ingredients together. I'm just going to reach in and get those little brown sugar clumplets. Also, I can't resist playing with my food. So it's the cornstarch and the eggs that thicken the custard. So whenever you're putting egg yolks into a mixture with sugar, you want to start stirring as soon as it goes in because the sugar has a way of, they say, burning the yolks, just that little kind of skin that you can get over yolks. So. This is, this is ready. Okay, so we've got some, ooh, we've got a few bubbles. So the milk is ready. You don't want to pour all the milk into the custard base immediately because you'll cook the eggs. So it's a little by little process. I'm going to try and do this lefty. Okay, so just a little bit of milk to warm the mixture. The term for it is tempering it, um, but really you're just getting the eggs used to the warmth. Just a couple of ladles in slowly and carefully. So it's really, it's light, but not like it's almost the opposite of when you get into a cold pool and you just dip your toes in so you can get used to the water. So it's just getting the eggs used to the heat. Now you can just pour in a steady stream. How much did I spill? Mm, not, not much, okay. Just keep whisking. Good. All blended. So this has to go back into the pot. Sometimes you have to rinse the pot because you might have some stuck milk, but take a look at this. Perfect. The cold water trick worked. I'm not rinsing. Okay. Back to be cooked. So the custard should heat, um, should cook on a fair amount of heat. Don't be timid, don't be shy, but do whisk. 
right? This is a whisk, 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 don't stop whisking exercise. You need the heat for the cornstarch. And you need the whisking so that you don't cook the eggs. As you're stirring, and you wanna make sure to get like the tip of the whisk into the corners of the pot, you can feel the custard start changing texture. Just gets a little thicker and it's slightly noticeable at first. Yeah, okay, so, oh, this is so exciting. So I'm starting to see the slight traces from the whisk and I'm feeling a little resistance and it goes from liquid to thick, like quickly. And it's now. You can see that the whisk is leaving tracks. Oh, I love the way this looks. And you're stirring, 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 don't stop, and waiting for a bubble to pop at the surface. Pop, ah, there, okay. When you see that bubble, 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 you think you're finished, but you're not. You need another oh, minute or so to just keep stirring. Oh, it's so pretty. It's the little things in life that get me excited. <laughs> I love the way it changes and it's smooth and thick and so different from what it was when we started. Okay, I'm calling this cooked. The custard is flavored with vanilla and rum. You don't have to use rum, but it's really good with the vanilla. It's a very plain dessert. It's not, it's not a firework snack. It, you don't taste it and say, wow. It's truly comforting. So as much as I love this, I'm going to part with it. I'm going to cover this and set it aside at room temperature, let it cool and thicken. I'm using store-bought puff pastry, which I do most of the time. Although now that I've been watching The Great British Bake Off, I keep thinking I should be making rough puff every afternoon, um, but I don't. So this is store-bought. The tart, can be made with pie dough or with pat brise. It's really very accepting. So if you're starting with a rectangle, you need to kind of square it a bit. This is this needs about a 13 inch round. So that's probably the right width. There, give it a little. That looks good. So. If it's not right, you can patch it. So this was a buttered spring form. So I'm trying to just Bend it down a bit so that it will meet the bottom of the pan, the, the corner of the pan. This is actually fun to do. Um, I'll stop fussing with it, but it just, it doesn't really need more. So you've got pleats. It's not even, some of the dough folds over on itself. That's fine. You want to trim the dough now that you've put it in so nicely, about an inch and a half up. So again, I'm eyeballing this. Happily, it doesn't have to be perfectly even because I don't think I'm that even. Yeah. So the custard is cold and jiggly and really firm. I'm going to whisk it, but I just want to show you. You could actually cut. 
that's how nicely it firms. Isn't that wonderful? I love this. Um, okay, but we need to get it just a little smoother. Just whisk it up so that it can go into the crust. So if you wanted to, you could use this filling without baking it in the crust as the filling for a tart with some fruit on top of it. So after you've made it and it's cold the way it is, you could just pour it into a tart and you saw how nicely it would cut, a tart shell, how nicely it cuts when it's cold. I'm looking at this thinking, do I want, would I like, not today, um, like rum-soaked raisins in it. I don't know that I've ever seen that in Paris, but I might see it in my kitchen one day. Oh, it's good. So just give it a little squiggle, wiggle, and it's going into a hot oven because we want it, unlike so many other pastries, we want this to get really dark and develop the skin on top. So I don't think anything will leak but I'm putting it on a parchment lined sheet just because I'd rather bake than clean up. I'm gonna bake the tart for 50 to about 55 minutes. So the tart has been chilled, pan is cold. Um, run a knife around the edges to release it. I did this before I got here. Can I say that? <laughs> okay, right. Or I love to do this. Because you've buttered the pan and the butter is cold, it can be a little sticky. If you have a hair dryer, just puff some heat from the hair dryer around the spring form and it will release. It's a good thing to do with cheesecakes too. So open. It's so pretty. It's, it's dark just the way it should be. And it has these little patches of almost mahogany. And that's the sign of a good flan. So let's see. This I didn't do before you got here. Oh, easy peasy. There we go. You know, even when I'm alone in my kitchen, when I take something like this out and put it on, it just makes me so happy. Um, I'll be in my kitchen by myself and say, well, look at how nice it is. And it is nice. Now I get to have a slice, mm, right here. I haven't gone to school today, so I don't deserve a big slice. These are actually usually cut in rather large wedges. Oh, look at how, okay, <laughs> stay put, but jiggle. See the way it jiggles? And that nice cut that you get, I love this. So this is usually served in the afternoon. You might have it with coffee or tea, or as I said, you would buy it from the bakery and maybe nibble on it on your way home or have it as an after school um, snack. It's not considered fancy enough to be served at a dinner party, but I just think it's so great. Why would you not have it every time you could? So I'm gonna eat it kid style. Mm. It's cold, it's creamy, it's good at room temperature too. It's actually, you get more of the vanilla and rum if you serve it at room temperature. So it's got that kind of flavor that you have a bite and you think, mm, this is really nice. Then you have a second bite, and the second bite is better than the first. And 
it just kind of draws you in. It's a quiet kind of deliciousness. I love this, and I hope you will too. And you can find the recipe either in my new book, Baking with Dory, or of course on Food 52. I hope you'll like the video. I hope you'll subscribe to Food 52, and I'll be back again soon. We can bake together again.